give me as many digits in pi as you can. Okay, <laughs> even though I don't like pi, I like to symbol pi. Um, 3.1415926. I share science because I genuinely love it myself. Uh, if my kids don't respond to it, um, that's fine, we do something else. But usually they, uh, they go along with it. I find fun ways to make it interesting and uh, incorporate it into our life. Five, three, five, eight, nine, seven, nine. My dad has like a lab programming area in this one room and he would invite me to do programming projects. Three, two, three, eight, four, six, two, six, four. And then eventually I got interested in it because it was really fun. Four, one, one, nine, seven, one. Crap, I lost count. <laughs> ah. It's just infused in our life. It's, it's just part of who we are. First Leo League is this amazing program that gets kids pumped up about science and technology. It's like a, elevated it to sort of a rock star status where there's music pumped in. Kids get a program and build bots and get excited about it the same way as a sports competition. Three, two, one, so the last time in the competition, we scored well in a lot of things. We did really good in programming. We got first in regionals, advanced to state. My goal is to do well and have fun. What kid doesn't like Legos? Um, and so you take something that the children have a natural affinity for, and then you meld that with uh, teaching of principles of science uh, and uh, engineering, uh, programming, uh, math. Teamwork, working together with other students and classmates, and um, learning something new. Programs like this uh, help the next generation have enthusiasm for science, technology, engineering, and math so that they can see how much fun it can be and learn from the experiences, especially working in a team like they do for the first Lego League. <laughs> Teamwork, well, we have really good teamwork, but our way of deciding things is like a mini argument. We need two people to work on the bigger, heavier balls, like the baseball no, and those the tennis just, balls. Those just knock the ones out of the middle. Yeah, I know, but... We always tease each other a lot. <laughs> so trying to be, like, actually civil so that it doesn't look like we're being mean to each other because we all know that we're just teasing, but not everyone knows that. The judges don't know that we're all like best friends. Welcome, how's your day going so far, you guys? Great. Good. Good. All right, what's your team name? Robot, Robot squad. squad. All right. The goal is to, using a straw, and to get as many of the balls as you can onto the target. You should have somebody that just like keeps the balls in the middle. They think that we're judging them um, how many balls get into the target. So they're, they're thinking of the numbers. So as they're pushing the balls towards the target, they want to know, did I get 10 points? Did I get 5 points? But we really want to know, you know, are they, are they focusing specifically on one ball? Are they including the team members? Who Slowly. goes first? Michael. Like Michael. So when you I blow second. In the middle. Like I'll yeah. do that. Are they communicating with themselves, and are they following really what they, you know, the team, what the team decided they were going to do, and how they were going to accomplish the goal? Okay. Ten seconds. 
We were a little shaky the first run. Our, that was the practice one. The second time we got it, and I think we also did good at the questions. Do any of your team mem members mentor others? Explain how so. We have some pretty advanced programs, and sometimes like I'm not smart enough to do the program as well. So Nathan, he's good. Pro he's a very good programmer. He comes and helps me do the program. During the run, what we do is we want to make sure that they're starting off with their robot fully in base, and it's a cube, it's about 18 inches high, so we have to make sure the entire robot fits inside of that every time they start. And then I watch to make sure that if they have, they touch their robot, they lose a point, there's a penalty for that, because the, the missions should be run autonomously by the programming inside the Legos. And there's some strategy for that, because some missions are worth more points than others, and so some may choose to do one mission versus another, and some may actually strategically take on a penalty point because they know if they can get to this end of the board and complete this mission, if they just pick it up and bring it back, they can complete more missions. Three, two, one, Lego! Well, we did have uh, quite a few mess ups, like the table triggered. It's just the common mess ups that happen. We have it perfect at home, but then it messes up. What? What is it? Grab it. Grab it. This is not mission two. The hardest was probably calm me down because we were so frantic. Load this up. Flip it around. Load that up. Put it in the corner. Space it. Space it. There. Go, go, go. I noticed that they seemed really nervous, but I was yeah. just trying to cheer them on and tell them, make sure they don't forget anything. And it turned out okay. And But we still did good. We play, we're in second place now. The second round of the robot game, uh, our team put up the first place score, and uh, we went back and we're sitting around and you know kind of happy of the way we'd done. But a couple of the parents were kind of thinking about that score seemed a little too high, um, that maybe that wasn't right, and uh, talked to the kids and said, "Hey guys, we think our score wasn't right. We should go check with the judges and make sure we get it right." And uh, the kids, without hesitation, said, "Yes, let's go and talk to the judges." And so they came to us as officials and said, "Hey, you guys goofed." and we were able to go back and find the score sheet and fix it. So it actually lowered the score, but it's certainly exhibiting gracious professionalism. And uh, the score was moved back down to where it should have been, and so they were no longer in first place, and the kids were just fine with that. They, they realized it was the right thing to do. How does that make you feel? Proud. <laughs> Very much. This is where we show judges what we did with our robot and the programs. They show me how they program their robots to do what it is they, they, it does on the course. This is a my block that sets all our important information, like the diameter the wheel, of the wheel and the width of the robot. You know, I look for do, do the kids have a basic knowledge of the programming language? Does it seem like they did the programming themselves, or did their parents help them program it? Also, it doesn't hit it and affect the turn. Mm -hmm. This last team did excellent. One of the best teams that I've seen so far. It had a lot of reuse of their code, so they explained that very well. We did have one problem, and the problem was that our the, we had three missions. The Orange team did amazingly well. They completed a number of the very difficult missions, um, some that some groups haven't even attempted. Go! Go! Oh no! Oh. Yes! Go, 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 go! East! 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 Just moving the yellow truck. Uh, you know, most teams would look at it literally and try to move it, and some uh, team actually found a way to tow it in a way that uh, our teams didn't think of. Well, they really had thought things through from beginning to the end. They did excellently. It was really exciting because this is our last run. We're good because we're second, and second's good because this only counts as fourth of our score. It's kind of fun for us to come up with ideas on how to f fix problems.
this year we're studying salmonella poisoning and we came up with like this ultraviolet light that could possibly help food poisoning and it's kind of fun because when you think about it then that could actually be a real solution. First we kind of look at the group energy in general, um, you know, are they you know, excited to present their research, how knowledgeable are they in what they're talking about, um, have they done the research, have they looked at multiple sources. The Orange team we thought uh, did well, um, they were very knowledgeable about their subject um, in particular. We thought that they could have improved on uh, being a little more engaging, so doing maybe a, a skit instead of just sitting and, and you know, reading from their um, from their sheets. Uh, otherwise, we thought they had a very good question. Um, we had we thought they you know used um, a variety of sources to get to their innovation and how they would solve the problem. We made it to state and won the programming award. I feel kind of excited because this is like the third year in a row that we actually won it and we put a lot of work into programming and that's our strongest point in our team's work. 